Hello and welcome. It's a good day to be on the farm. My name is Chuck and this is Edgewater episode 4. In the last episode we completed the harvest of the flax field and we have jumped over to this field which we have basically rented long enough to get this crop, the uh, peas, off of it. 40% yield bonus, 50% fertilized, but it also has these large weeds in the field, which is going to cut down on our yield, which is fine. Because I'm just trying to play with some of the new crops that we have available. I'm going to go ahead and get this fired up. And lower down here. And I think we're going to um, just sort of make a loop. So we're going to do the outside edge so that we can get in here. I don't even have access to this lane. I have access to this. Yeah, I was just talking about the grass. We're just going to cut ourselves in a swath here and start making a lap uh, around the outside so that we have somewhere where we can unload harvester if we need to um, which we of course will in a minute actually not in a minute this is uh, well it's going up faster All right. the flax really um, did not take much room in the harvester um, we you know only got two two full combines unloaded or excuse me I think there was more than two full combines, but there was only two tippers that we unloaded, and it was only 26,000 flex. Off of that giant field, too. Um, this one is going up faster. We're already at 12%, and this is a long field north to south, and it's got a couple of inlets, as you can see. Um, well, can you see that? So there's one there towards that farmyard. Um, I liked that farmyard, and I almost started right here next to this field, but that farmyard has cows. Um, just didn't want to do cows again we're, we're doing cows on riverview or at least we did cows on riverview um and i think we even did cows on Erlengrot towards the end of the series there so i, I felt like we didn't really need to do cows a third time on these series so i thought maybe let's just stay away from the cow shed and see what else we can come up with for this so all right 22 percent i was like there is a nice little inlet right here off the road I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. Um, so we could tip there if we had to as well, but it looks like we're only at you know, a quarter of the way full. We should be able to make, hopefully, our one lap around, and we could always tip over the yard or back at the beginning and kind of go from there. I hope you guys enjoyed episode three. Um, obviously, there was a lot of time lapse in there uh, to get all of that harvest loaded in. So I was going to do this one a little bit different. Um, and just ask for your feedback. Um, I don't necessarily like 12 minute musical interludes in the, in the videos. They're, n they're nice to make it watchable for the harvest. Um, I mean, I did harvest that whole thing manually. Um, all of it was there in the recording uh, because I used time lapse to get it in there, um, but I had to play like I think four songs in that recording so that that was watchable <laughs> for you guys otherwise we could have certainly done um, more harvest like this uh, where basically um, either you're going to watch me harvest for an hour and I'm just going to talk about whatever's on my mind or uh, I'm going to do the time lapse and throw on some music and you can see it so on the flax field i did that i did uh time lapse and music i think what i'm going to do on this field once i'm done um with at least one tip i want to make sure you guys see at least one tip in the trailer i think i'm just going to record and tip and then i'm going to just say hey i'll catch you guys at the end of the harvest and i think i'm just going to do the rest of this off camera and then come back um, and have you guys watch the end of the field. So I'm just going to cut together, you know, three or four little clips of process throughout the harvest, but not necessarily, hey, um, here's every single second of the harvest. So 
I want your feedback, I guess is what I'm asking here. Do you prefer music in time lapse and seeing every little bit of the harvest? Um, or would you just prefer like me to cut you in uh, to the important parts like tipping back into our little silo? And the reason I want you guys to be around for that is because I want to move the auger to a different silo so that we've got one silo for our flax and one silo for our peas. Um, because we're probably only ever going to do three different crop types at once. Um, or at least in the beginning, given the size of the farmyard and the equipment that we have. I would be very surprised if we did four different crop types. And we only have three silos. I know I can tip them all into one, and it doesn't really matter game mechanic-wise. But I think... Um, I think it is more realistic, because a farmer who had three different fields and was doing three different crop types would have three different silos like I do in the yard to hold those different crops so um, but I got a little bit of off, off, off topic there so just let me know drop a comment um, and just let me know what you prefer because I am really enjoying this map um, I think these weird field shapes are amazing it makes it feel much more realistic much more lifelike um, than some of the maps like I'm also playing uh, I guess well I'm playing Brosum which is another map uh, that was released um, a couple of months ago I think it's relatively new um, but it is very square which I, I still like because you can use helpers and workers and all those things but it's very square um, with very little space between the fields, so almost every square inch of that map is plantable and harvestable, um, and there's like 80 fields, um, but it's also very flat. Like, this has just these slight dips and valleys and, and goes down and then goes back up, um, which also makes it feel very, um, very lifelike. And, uh, my third critique of some of the maps is you can always see where the edge is, especially in, in, in Brosum, since we're talking about that one. Um, there's like a big, uh, what we call a dike, like a, a big buildup of land on the left side that sort of blots out everything, so you just kind of see this giant hill. I know there's things behind the hill. I understand I've driven back there, but it just looks like oh there's the edge I'm going to farm right up until I get to this part or to that part or to whatever uh, and this one there is an edge but you have to really look for it because of all the trees and all the detail it's very hidden um, so I just feel like this map feels two or three times bigger than it really is because of all the windy roads because of all the fields and rivers you have to drive around and the canals and then also just you're, you're never really bumping into the edge of the map like that. So, so I digress. I'm enjoying this map, um, and I just want to know. Like, I I want to make videos that you guys want to watch. So, uh, and I think I am going to keep playing this one for a while because it's it's a cool looking map. It's got a lot of great features on it. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Do I think I can get from here to there? with 2% in my harvester. I guess we will find out. It's gonna be close. I wanna get there so I can tip right into this thing. Oh, 9,300. Nope, and we killed some crop. Not that much, though. All right, so let's get so close. Um, it's really funny, actually. I was going to just line this up, but since we're already up and driving, let's drive this back up here to this little inlet. So this one takes up a lot more room in the harvester than the flax did. So that's good to know if we plant peas in the future. And 
that also means let's get this angled like so and then we'll get this fired up and brought over but it also means we're going to make m several more trips back to the silo um, than we would have if this was a flax or like a soybean. Um, so, who knows? Uh, anyway, if I can see it off in the distance there. Actually, this is the farmyard here, so I need to turn in. Hopefully this farmer doesn't mind me using all of his bridges and access points and a lot of his farmyard just to get around just so I can grab the crop that I'm basically stealing from him um, like I said it's rented I don't want to play this field all the time but I did want to get some of a new crop type so I'm gonna go ahead and do that like so and then I'm, I'm pretty sure and I think we talked about this before but since it's loading so this is Field 13 over here, it's just a little bit far away. Not terrible, but we own 19. We own four, which we still need to harvest. And yeah, we bought 41. So we own this, can I, can I show it? Yeah, so we own this section here. So we're basically just renting this field just to get the peas off. We'll sell that back to have a little bit of walking around money. And if we want a fourth field, we'll buy field 40, which is already cultivated and ready to go. Um, because I believe um, that will give us a nice little setup over there by the yard that we did choose. So let me back this out. Oh, this has got a ditch behind it too, doesn't it? Oh no, it doesn't. Um, I'm just gonna turn this off and leave it here because we'll need to tip one more time anyway. All right, and I'm going to leave this here for now, as we discussed. Um, actually, let me come back down here. Uh, and I will go ahead and keep on harvesting. And I will cut back in with you guys um, when the harvest is finished or when I'm dumping into um, one of the little silos um, at some point in time so you can see which silo that we're using. I guess it probably doesn't matter if it's the first one or not since I will dump all of the peas into the same silo so you'll see which one I chose when the auger has been moved. Um, so I'll cut back in with you guys in a little bit uh, as we're wrapping this one up. So uh, hang in there and I'll be back in just a few. And we're back. And as you can see, it is getting pretty late on our evening in August. Um, which I'm glad we slowed the time down to one. I wish we would have slowed it down to like three at the beginning of the day, times three speed, I mean. Uh, so we wouldn't have had just like, oh, bright, sunny day, and then, oh, all at dark, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, we're wrapping up here on this field, which, again, we are planning on giving back to the farmer here in just a second. Oh, that's a terrible camera angle. I don't like it when there's trees right there. It makes it hard to see. Let's back up just a hair. Hopefully this will work. Um, 180. 79, 180.3, 180. And let me get down here to our Harvest. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of orange left. Oh, and I should have been looking at where I'm going. There are little bits that I missed on the field, but honestly, with the large weeds um, that were in intermixed with the plants here, um, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. Like the amount of flax that I would get, or not flax, excuse me, the amount of peas I would get from that little spot right there with the large weeds is not even worth the gas probably to spend it to go over there so we will just keep going and probably call that good All right, let me see I'm gonna put the pipe out here let me just check the map one more time so yeah like 
little things on the corner there, one strip there, a couple of strips here, and those two little strips there. Not worth the trouble, especially this late at night. And getting that done. So we'll get this new Holland T7 fired up. Get all the lights on. Because that's where we're at. I will take you back to the yard. And I will show you where we are storing the peas. In which silo, I mean. Oh, tight turn. Don't hit the header. Is this a terrible angle? Oh, I hit the header. But I did get close enough to be able to tip, so we're just going to call that a day. Should have taken a second run at that, but oh well. Um, so yes, uh, tomorrow in September, we're going to... Obviously, we got to go back. we got to dump this grain. we got to pack up the harvester, get the harvester back to the yard. We have got to place a spawn point or a sleep trigger. Spawn point is... Um, what you call it in other games <laughs> like Minecraft or Terraria not uh, not one of these anyway uh, but we're gonna drive back to the main yard and also I did move the uh, header trailer over there into our field from the neighbor's field because I felt bad leaving it over there when we didn't own that field and also I was just afraid I would lose it in the dark so I wanted to keep track of it. So I moved it over there. And then we will sell this field back um, to the farmer. And then we will either use that to buy field. I want to say it was number 40. Um, but we'll look at it here in a second. Or we will... Um, or we will not. And just save it for the fact that we're going to need um, some more equipment here. Almost missed my turn could have driven around the corner and came in the yard that way but since field 19 is open I've been cutting across my own field just because I can why not take the shortcut if it's available um, so I, I want to buy that other field because then I would have four fields to kind of cycle through here but we just don't have the cash for equipment I mean we got a harvester we got a tractor and a tipper and we got some crops in the silos. So all of that is positive. As we fast forward through the winter, we will also, um, you know, make some money. Because we'll be able to sell this crop at its peak, which we need to check into for each of these. And see where we're at. I obviously have never done lentils or peas or flax before. I don't think we have any lentils actually, just peas and flax now. But I want to plant some lentils. I think those plant in the spring, if I remember right. So we're going to dump this in here. And then we will take a look at where that got us to. Oh, and then I did buy, I'm pretty sure, I bought that cedar that was for sale. Um... Yeah, I did. I bought that cedar, didn't I? I bought a cedar that was on sale. Um, let's hear Look, I wanted to check about a thousand things, so we'll go through these here. So, in our prices, so we have 26,000 liters of flax, 52,000 liters of peas, and price fluctuation... Um, there's a couple different ones here that are available. Hold on. Sorry about that. Let me get back in here. All right. So for our peas, um, we obviously got twice as many, 26 to 52,000 liters off of that field, but the price is less than half. Um, so flax seems to be more profitable, but we'll see. Anyway, price for peas in August is at the bottom. They go to the top in July. So we have to save these for pretty much a whole year to get the money back from them. But up to 1200 552 is the low, which is pretty much where we're at now. Um, and then here for flax, 1500 1400 Flax at least gets up in January. So at the end of the year, we'll be able to get some money back from those. Um, so yeah, but 
point being, um, we have stored those in that silo. We're going to pull this back in here like we did in the opening episode. Um, my point, or one of the things I was saying was I think we bought... So I'm going to go... Yep, yeah, and turn off the lights like this. We're going to flip over to here where this is still running. Put the pipe in. Start working this over here. When we get this parked up, I will check. I'm pretty sure that I actually bought a cedar. And I'm pretty sure the cedar that we bought can direct drill. I would love to cultivate and to do all the things to the fields. And we will at some extent, but we might just, because of the timing of everything um, on this first harvest, we might just do what sometimes farmers have to do, which is, hey, here's what I've, the tools I've got and the equipment. I know my yield's not gonna be quite as good as I was hoping for. Snap on there, please. Yep. But, uh, you know, take what you can get. And uh, the fact is, we can direct drill into the fields that we have harvested. Luckily, the one field across from our yard was actually cultivated. Um, I swear, when I started the day, there was crops on there, so it just got harvested like right at the second that uh, we got over there and bought it. I think we were a little indecisive, if I remember right. Um, but, so, what I'm saying is, we only have $5,000, but technically, if we go pick up that direct drill um, cedar, if we bought it, which I'm pretty sure we did, we could buy like two bags of seeds, throw them in there, and come back and plant one of these fields. Like, we could literally plant field 19 without cultivating, or go over and plant the field we did cultivate just to get a start on some things um, and go from there. So. We have options, um, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I don't want to obviously take out much of a loan on this one. We are going to sell this field back, which is going to give us money, which we could buy a cultivator, but we're also going to need seeds. We're going to need fertilizer. We're going to need a fertilizer spreader. We might need lime if we start doing a lot of in-depth field work. So we might have to lime something. I don't know that we can afford that right now. We can see what comes up on the sales in the off season here um, to see if we can get any of that other equipment used as well. Um, I was gonna drive around and put this in that shed, but since it's right here, I'm actually just gonna pull it through. Should probably get rid of those bushes so I can have a more direct route. But we will drop this thing in here up a little bit more and did that get all the way in yes it did so I'm gonna turn oh we had one more set of lights I'm just gonna leave those headlights on something that I like to do in these games um, if I remember right this was a double door so how do we shut it we go all right and shutting that in got our harvester all up here I shut half the door so nobody can drive away with it and we're gonna run over here we'll leave the auger out because it's not going anywhere I don't think that's worth folding up right now so here's the farmhouse that we bought um, it's a nice little farmhouse, got some lights on in the kitchen. It's got its own garage over here. None of this opens though, I'm pretty sure. Which I'm not pretty sure, I didn't check anything. We just bought this kind of sight unseen because I was gonna buy that other farmyard. Um, anyway, so there's a front porch and a back porch kind of area here. Um, but the thing that I like is this map has, let me turn on my flashlight so we can see what we're doing. Should have turned that on before. So yes, in our garage. Oh, here's some new sales. Oh, um, now there's a harvester and a animal transport trailer and a logging equipment thing. 
in our garage. Yes. So the, we bought, nope, we bought the cedar, which is a six meter cedar, and it allows us to direct drill um, wheat, barley, or canola. Wheat, barley, or canola. Okay. I guess maybe this can't do flax. We will find out. But um, we've got this cedar as well. So we can direct drill. Uh, we bought it with 26 months of use on it. But it can hold 4,000 liters of seed. So we can pretty much just pick this up, buy some bags of seed, throw them in there, and good to go. So we have almost everything that we need to do a bare minimum. Um, so I did install my favorite small housing pack with this little thousand dollar tiny house, but this map actually comes with this $15 lawn chair sleep trigger. So we can essentially drop this lawn chair in right here next to our back door. And after a hard day's work, we can just come sit down and sleep until the morning. We still have a busy day next day in September because we have to get that wheat out of the field and we gotta go pick up the cedar. So the next day is here. It looks like it's gonna be a little bit overcast, but that's fine. So we're gonna come back over here. We put our flax in this one. We put our peas over here. So when we do get, this silo is empty. Yeah, so this one look it literally says flax twenty six thousand, peas fifty two thousand. So we'll put our wheat over here, and then we'll need to replant either flax or peas based on what we've got. And we'll probably do flax because it seems to be a little bit more profitable. It doesn't take up as much room, and um, it sells at a peak of January, not July. So we don't have to wait as long to get our profit back. So I'm guessing flax on one of the two seeds, one of the two fields. So let me go back up to the field. So here's what I'm saying. It is the next morning. We can zoom out a little bit and let me go to here. So this field, we're gonna sell back for 136,000. We own this one, here's our yard, and we own these two. We could buy this one now. Oh, 54,000 is a good price, and I don't really want anybody to put anything in there. Um, yeah. All right, so now we've got this whole section. I suppose it'd be nice someday if we owned this one here too. It's only 41, but. So this is our farm here. We've got harvested, plowed, good to know, cultivated, cultivated, ready to be harvested. So these two, we could actually pick up the cedar and plant today, and then we'll be up here harvesting with this. So we'll get the harvester going here, and we'll eventually get the planter. And since this is already cultivated, there's really nothing else for us to do but stick some crop in there. Um, and then the problem is we're going to need to weed all of this. Since we're not plowing anything, we're going to have to deal with weeds. So we got to fertilize and we got to spray from a weeder. So that's going to be a big expense. We'll probably have to lease this first year till we can get a profit going. So, but since these two are ready to go, we'll obviously plant 40 and 41 soonish. And then we'll have the rest of the year until, let me see, when do these crops go? So, um... Peas and lentils both get planted in April and flax gets planted until May. So since we said we were doing flax, probably we've got till May. We might do lentils in a field too if we get there in time and if our cedar will do it. Um, but otherwise... Um, We'll see. So I suppose that is the question we should probably answer before anything else is, what can our cedar do? Um, 
before we get our wheat harvest on. So I was going to take this over to the field and get started, but I do want to go pick up our cedar. Um, and now that we have 86,000, we can get our bags of seed ready to go as well. Can I fit the tractor through there? Better open up both doors for this. So let's see. Disconnect that for now. We're going to pull this out. And this is a bit of a drive back to the farm store, so I'm going to use everyone's favorite little cheat. Nope. Select that, reset it. Okay. Now we're back at the store, and there is our cedar. We are going to have to do some repairs here pretty soon, because this is down to 43%. Um, and our harvester is getting there. But let's go ahead and buy some seed while we're here. This thing, I'm pretty sure, said 4,000. So let's go to... Let me double check. I don't want to buy too many seeds. 4,000 liters of seed. So let's come back up to the top. And big bags of seeds are 800 bucks and they're a thousand liters so we can literally buy four and then we're gonna get this hooked up we're gonna get that loaded and that will probably do it for this episode and then we'll haul this back um, I think we could plant wheat if we wanted to continue doing the wheat oh there we are because um, I think wheat and barley are still plantable today. And since those are cultivated, we could do that. And then we're just going to go like this and start filling that up. And it's set on wheat right now. Oh, it was 4,000 liters of fertilizer that we could put in here. And 1,600 liters of seed. So now we've got bags of seed here. We need to figure out how to haul them back to the farm. That's not ideal. Um, do we buy the fertilizer while we're here? Yes, we do. Solid fertilizer bag, so we know we can take three, four of those. Oh, that's 5,000 bucks. Let's just buy two. And then we will pull this over here for the fertilizer. And if this only takes us to halfway. Yeah, see, that's what I was afraid of. Um, so it can go 2,000 liters. So 2,400 liters of fertilizer, 1,600 liters of seed, I'm guessing, is what that means. All right, and then last question before we wrap up this episode. Let's cycle through the crops. So we've got wheat. Oh, why did I unload that? I hit the wrong thing. Um, well, that's nice of them to put it in a nice little pile like that for us. It's interesting that it stacks it in crates when we get it out of the bags. Where did the rest of the fertilizer go? We literally lost some by unloading it like that. We only have 17% of our fertilizer left. Um, that's dumb because fertilizer is expensive. Okay, well, I need to... <laughs> whoops. Um, and I don't want to reload the game, so we're just going to eat that loss, I guess which is not great, but I'm going to turn the help window on because what I thought was going to um, yeah, select seed. How did that unload everything? 
I must have hit the right trigger. I thought I hit left anyway. So we're on wheat. It can do barley. It can do oat, canola, soybeans, sorghum, oil seed, grass. Yep, it can do flax, peas, and lentils. Okay, well, sorry for that. And I don't, I got to go look for my fertilizer and figure out what happened with that. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this harvest of the first two fields is done. We've got one field left and then we got to get to planting and our direct drill here will do that. And then we're going to have to start repairing stuff. And then sadly, we're going to have to figure out a way to get these seeds back to the farm. So I'll work on that on the next episode and then we'll get busy in the wheat harvest. Um, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.